uh, yeah, we were all uh, out of town and uh, <coughs> we just took a little bit of a break last week and uh, we are here now again. Amen. And amen. Okay, so uh, I think I need to introduce myself. <coughs> Chip, 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 chip. Okay. Are you able to hear me? Okay. Okay, so today, uh, I know we have, we have a communion service today, so I'm just going to share a, a small word, some thought uh, from the scriptures, and then we'll go into the communion time. So uh, the way uh, the word that I titled for today is uh, stepping out of the boat. Okay, so stepping out of the boat meaning stepping out of our comfort zone. So what is stepping out of our comfort zone? What does it mean? To each doing something we're we're not normally going to do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> true. That's true. Right? Because something that we are not used to do uh, doing it, and you're stepping into that, and. What we're going to look about, uh, uh, I mean, uh, see here today is when we take that step of trying to do something which we are not used to, you're not doing that alone, but you're doing it with Jesus by your side. Amen. And the, and the verses that we're going to see here today is how to experience a miracle, right? I'm pretty sure everybody wants a miracle in our life, right? I need a miracle in many areas. I'm pretty sure each one of you need a miracle. But how do we receive that miracle? Right? We'll, we'll go, go through some of the scripture verses and uh, go not too detailed, but a little bit of uh, to see what it translates to. Okay? Now, I'm going to read from Matthew 14, 15, 21. So, the, and to set the stage, right? Uh, there are two um, miracle incidents from the scriptures I'm going to share. But the one which I'm going to talk about now precedes the next one. Okay, uh, it's at the stage a little bit. So Matthew 14, 15 to 21. This is about Jesus feeding the 5,000, right? So this is what happens. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. This is happening soon after John the Baptist was beheaded and uh, Jesus was troubled and he went to a solitary place to be alone and uh, to pray, right? And then it was evening. So it's a remote place and it's already getting late. And there are a lot of people who followed Jesus when he went to have a time alone, right? So a lot of people followed him. And then the disciples come and say, like, send the crowd away so they can go to the village and buy themselves some food. Okay. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. This is the story which everybody knows. Right? Five loaves of bread and two fish. How can it feed a people of 5,000? Right? So his disciples and everybody were looking into what they visibly see in front of them. Right? But let's see what Jesus did here. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. The people, people, how many of them were, how many were there? Around 5,000 people. Right? He made them to sit on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and he broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces that were still left over. Even after serving. So that was a miracle that Jesus did, right? That 5,000 people were served with those five loaves of bread. And two fish. I still don't know like how it happened, but I believe that's how miracle happens, right? There is no logic to it. There is no certain process to it, because that's why it's called a miracle, <laughs> right? So miracle happens, but the Lord performs it. And here we see Jesus praying, and again he's proving him to be the Son of God, right? So he does a miracle, and five loaves and two fish. Um, serving 5,000 people, okay? So this is the state. So the, all the 5,000 people and most importantly, the disciples all witnessed the miracle that Jesus performed, right? So everybody witnessed Jesus, or well, miracle that Jesus performed right in front of their eyes, 
Okay, that's the stage. And now, after this miracle was performed, is what we see. What happens is Jesus actually uh, uh, have has his disciples get onto a boat and have them travel across the shore. Right. So let's read Matthew fourteen twenty two to twenty three. And this miracle, uh, what we are going to talk about this portion of uh, the scriptures, right, is basically at a high level, we're going to see stepping out of the comfort zone. Okay, number one, stepping out of the comfort zone, exercising our faith in Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus, being an overcomer when waves or troubles, distractions and all those things comes up and how you can become a miracle, uh, how you can experience a miracle like what Peter experienced, okay. Matthew 14, 22 to 23. Immediately Jesus made the disciples. Immediately. I think that word immediately has a significance, right? Because just now a miracle had happened uh, to the 5,000 people, right? And then immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him. He made the disciples get onto the boat and go ahead of him. So Jesus was not there with them and he's asking them to go ahead. To the other side, why he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went on the mountain by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone. Continue to read 25, 26. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. Okay, so, Jesus, uh, so the disciples got into the boat. They were sailing across to the other side, right? And then what happens in the night? Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking to the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. So right immediately after the miracle had happened, they got onto the boat. They were traveling to the other side. But you know what? It appears like the disciples who were there on the boat almost forgot immediately what has happened some time back and they failed to recognize Jesus when he was walking on the lake. Right? They failed to recognize him and they thought him to be a ghost. Okay. And what happened? So as soon as they saw Jesus walking, they thought he was a ghost and they trembled. They were filled with fear, right? How many of the how many times like uh, we have been in that situation? We have been walking that walk of faith, right? Suddenly something comes and hits us, or something terrifying happens, right? And maybe not a lot, but briefly we fall for it, right? Briefly we fall for it, and uh, when I say fall for it, uh, we get the fear grips us. Right? So same thing, if you look at here, what happened, the disciples were going on the boat, but then when, as soon as they saw Jesus walking, I mean, they didn't recognize first, in first place, the fear gripped them. Okay, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. So Jesus acknowledges it is me who is walking there, so take courage and don't be afraid. And, uh, one second. Let me go back to my verse, I think. Uh, let's see. Okay, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside of himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance of land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Again, shortly before dawn, we saw that. Walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. So Jesus was strengthening the disciples and telling, hey, it is me, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied. Okay, that's the verse which I was looking for. Okay. Out of all the disciples on the boat, you know what? Peter was the only one who said, tell me to come to you on the water. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Okay, and immediately Jesus says, come. See, I want to highlight that particular word, the word come, right? Because Jesus uses Peter's own word to fulfill what he was looking for. So many of the times when we actually uh, speak and pray, it's very important on the words that we use, right? 
and what we pray for and what we ask for right is very important because as we know from the scriptures every spoken word has the power right our tongue has the power of death and life we speak good good happens if we ask for something which is not good that also will happen because the power of uh, the the power of uh, death and life is in our tongue okay so here peter says jesus tell me to come to you and jesus just uses one word come okay so that's what we are saying that peter got down out of the boat walked on the water and came forward so okay now the disciples knew it was jesus so they know like okay they are in the in midst of jesus so he is going to take care but you know what out of all the disciples again so peter made the first step to ask jesus tell jesus that hey i want jesus i want to come to you and jesus and peter he took the step of faith and stepped out of the boat right so peter stepped out of the boat so he was in a very safe place inside the boat the all the waters were around the winds were coming right and uh, it was uh, before dawn right it's it's a dark i am assuming it's going to be a, a dark uh, kind of an environment over there but they were all safe inside the boat but then peter took the first step right and took the step of faith to step out of the boat what does it mean he's stepping out of his comfort zone he's stepping out of his safe zone right the boat was a safe zone where he was and why he took that step of faith because he saw jesus in front of him his eyes was fixed with jesus and he believed that jesus is going to take care of him right and with that faith he stepped out which is good right and then what happened after that but when he saw the wind he was afraid it's so, okay then peter got down of the boat and walked on the water and came towards jesus so he did step out he did walk on the water and you know what he experienced that miracle he experienced the miracle of his life by walking on the water like how jesus walked so jesus walked on the water so he also was able to walk the water on the water because his eyes was fixed on jesus not on the winds and the fear that surrounding him that threatening him but his eyes was fixed on jesus and when his eyes was fixed on jesus he was not seeing all those turbulence the wind the waves everything that surrounding him can we relate that to a current scenario the days that we live in day in day out there are so many things happens around us lot of distractions happens right lot of distraction happens where our thoughts and everything gets distracted very quickly and while we are walking looking at jesus right is very easy to get distracted with things around i'm just trying to relate to the current world scenario what peter is going through right so he stepped out of the boat so he was able to walk because he, he was not getting distracted and so what happened came towards jesus but then he saw the wind and then he was afraid and beginning to sing cried out lord save me so he was good he was able to he experienced a miracle right so he know what it means to trust on the lord and he was walking on the water but very soon after experiencing the miracle when he slightly turned towards the waves that's coming around him right the wind that's coming around him you know what fear gripped him the moment he took his eyes off jesus and focused on the waves i are able to get what i'm trying to say so he took his as long as his eyes was on jesus and he was walking towards jesus right he was good safe and he was experience a miracle the moment he took his eyes off jesus and regarded the wind and the waves to be more important right what happened the fear gripped him and the moment fear gripped him he started sinking he started sinking but you know what after that immediately jesus reached out his hand and caught him you of little faith he said why did you doubt right so he said but the two things i want to call out here right one 
Jesus was, uh, I feel like Jesus was testing the faith of all the disciples because he just did a miracle, right? And they were immediately onto the boat and he wanted to see where their faith went. I mean, I'm just thinking that probably he was, is more, usually a test of faith happens in order for, uh, because God wanted to strengthen us, right? To get more closer to him. And he tests the faith so that we get stronger in the word and stronger in the faith in which that we are walking. So he stepped out of the boat, right? And he all experienced that. But you know what? The word of God also says, the Lord will not test you beyond what you could handle, Amen. right? He will not test you beyond what you could handle because that's a learning process. That's how we all learn, right? And here we see that the moment Peter was sinking, Jesus just extended his hand and pulled him out and saved him. And both together went onto the boat and the wind subsided. Amen. So even today, right? See, even today, that could be a lot of things. Uh, that's uh, After this, I just wanted to hear from all of you also what you think about it, right? We might be facing some uncertainty. That could be something with really uncertainty that we might be facing. It could be some reports or whatever it is, right? Now, we can probably relate those uncertainty and relate to uh, uh, reports to the waves, right? And uh, I would say like, keep fixing your eyes on Jesus. Don't take your eyes off him, okay? And put the trust and faith upon him and walk towards him. You know what? The problems and whatever the circumstances you might be dealing, you'd be overcome. You'll be an overcomer of that situation. Amen? Amen. You'll be able to overcome that. Because most of the times, uh, that's how the fear comes in, right? So looking at things around, hey, what do I do? How do I handle it? And everything. So in that process, although we have the faith, what happens is we start dwelling on that more than the goodness of God and what he's able to do. Right? It has happened to me as well many times, right? Yes, we all walk in faith. But when some reality, something happens, without our knowledge, we try to focus more on the problem rather than what a God is able to do. Right? And here, we just have to, a little bit course correct, like when your problem <laughs> comes, make the problem smaller and make Jesus bigger. Amen. Right? And you'll be able to overcome that situation. Amen? Amen. 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 So what do you think about this? Has he, uh, let me ask, right? Uh, has anybody experienced a miracle in your life? And would you like to share? What do you think about it? Yeah, go ahead, Cindy. Well, I guess one of the closest things to a miracle was the day that uh, my husband was rescued out of prison. Mm. And was told that there would be no prison at that time. Okay. The only thing that was asked Is there any experience that you can share on uh, the miracle that you experience? And because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually uh, good to talk about it because that rekindles you, right? It, stay, it again bring your, your faith back into action on how you trusted the Lord mm -hmm. and how that miracle happened in your life. And it's not of the past. Again, it can still happen, right? Even if you're getting a healing or uh, anything, right? There's nothing that the Lord cannot do. He's able, he's able because he's our creator. Right? So I just wanted to encourage all of you that 
Sometimes in order to have that miracle, right? To experience a miracle, we may need to take that first step, the step of faith. Because that's an acknowledgement. Because when you take that step of faith, you know what? We get connected with the, uh, I mean, we get, we're just connected with the Lord. And then you know what? He is going to, which means that we're giving him an open door, open access for Jesus to come into us and to perform that miracle. Right? So many of the time we need to take the first step to, in order to receive the miracle. Right? That's a kind of a sign of acknowledgement if we can consider that. Because here we saw, let's say that Peter has, Peter did not ask Jesus. Jesus, can I come to you? He would have not experienced that miracle of walking on the water. But since he asked, Jesus gave it to him. Right? So if there is any need or any miracle that you have been waiting for, you know what, by faith, step into it and ask the Lord that, Lord, I want a miracle in these, these, these areas. And I believe, because the word of God says so, that you will witness and, re and see that miracle happening in your life. Amen? Okay, so... Uh, Maybe you can have the, uh, I think that that's what I wanted to, uh, it's a very uh, brief and a short thought which I wanted to share for today about experiencing a miracle in our life, right? So uh, you can, yeah, we can just have the uh, singing team coming over here going to the <coughs> communion. So even as we uh, get into a time of uh, communion, I just wanted to be uh, reminded uh, of three things, right? When you look up to the cross, right? These are the three things which I'm just trying to uh, highlight. Isaiah 53, 4, 5. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgression. For my transgression, for each one of our transgression, right? He was stricken. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace on him and by his wounds, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. So today, so that is the power as we take part in the communion. By his stripes, we are healed. So if there is any healing that's needed in any areas of our life, you know what, even as we take part in the communion, just receive that healing for those areas, right? Receive that healing. Let's sing this song and uh, this is a, and then we'll lead it, go into the taking part of the communion. <coughs>
take part in the communion um, so from 1 Corinthians 11 27 28 so then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord everyone ought to examine ourselves examine right examine ourselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup so in some time, even as we together, uh, as we part, take part, right? The next few seconds or a minute, just uh, think about, examine yourself in the different areas, right? Where we need to turn ourselves to the Lord. Okay. It's okay. I mean, I know uh, we live in this world and uh, every day is a process, right? And... Uh, this is one of the time, I know it's every day is a process that we get back to the Lord, but we need to take part in the communion. This is yet another opportunity for us to reflect upon it, examine ourselves, and turn to the Lord, right? In certain areas where we might have kept them away, right? So and whoever takes part, you know what? This is the this is the key. Whoever takes part in communion will have eternal life. This is from John 6, 53 to 54. Whoever takes part in the communion will have eternal life and God will raise him on the last day. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Let me read that again. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh, of the son of man the bread resembles the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood the cup resembles the blood of christ you have no life in you who eats my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and i will raise them up at the last day right? even as we lift up our the, the bread for i received from the lord what I also passed on to you, each one of you here. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembrance. What are we remembering about? Remembering about everything that he taught us. Remembering about how we need to walk a life. Right? How to walk a godly life. And also remembering, most importantly, remembering the things that happened on the cross, right? The death, burial, and resurrection, and also remembering about that one day that we are going to see Jesus, right? We are going to see him. Remembering about everything about him, right? So do this in remembrance of me. So let us take part in the bread together. Then he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let me read that line again. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And we all know like when God forgives us, right, he doesn't remember them after that, right? Basically, we are washed completely. We are, com we are completely washed. The, our sins are completely washed. Okay? So even as we lift up this cup and uh, let's take part in uh, taking part in the blood of Christ, and uh, remembering what has happened on the cross and especially the resurrection of Christ on the third day. Let's uh, drink together. Thank you. 
thank you jesus lord thank you lord master lord for giving us the privilege to take part in this communion oh lord master and to remember about you oh lord jesus remember about everything that you taught us and lord even uh, the, all the healings and miracles oh lord jesus that you to wanted us to walk lord jesus the walk that even in this life oh lord master to experience those healing and miracles in our life oh lord master lord it's a word says lord master lord by your stripes we are healed stripes we are healed lord even as we take part took part lord master lord in the in the bread and uh, the communion of lord jesus lord we believe oh lord master lord that you are healing us oh lord jesus you're healing us oh lord master we receive that healing oh lord jesus yes jesus by your stripes we are healed by your stripes we are healed Lord we pray and Lord we pray for each and everybody here oh Lord master if there is a healing that they are longing for oh Lord master Lord we pray that you will give them the healing oh Lord Jesus thank you Lord thank you for this time oh Lord master thank you Jesus even as before we close i just want to sing this song once again because this is a this is a very good song um, what can wash away right we sang that Let's sing that but a little bit slowly, right? And Vicky, if you can join me. Yeah. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of